Hello friends, welcome to our podcast, Learning Matters. Learning Matters are a series of conversations we've been having regarding all that matters as far as learning is concerned. Hence, we call it Learning Matters. And today we are here to discuss something very important, something sensitive and something much required in today's times, especially the tough times in the area of education. Today, we are here to talk about adolescent mental health and their well-being. A study conducted by UNICEF reports that more than one in seven adolescents aged 10 to 19 is estimated to live with a diagnosed mental disorder globally. Of these, South Asia has the highest numbers of adolescents with mental disorders. The State of World's Children in 2021 also found that around 14% of 15 to 24-year-olds in India, or one in seven, reported often feeling depressed or having very little interest in doing various things. The pandemic definitely over the past two years has posed various challenges by creating isolation, uh, changing the environment of adolescents, with schools shutting down, with uh, various social um, engagements becoming zero. This has had grave effect on on their day-to-day lives. In order to discuss this in greater detail, and find out how we can probably try to address it. I have with me Meena David today. To tell you a little bit about Meena, Meena David is a clinical psychologist and has for uh, for the past 25 years worked with children, adolescents, adults and families. Currently, in addition to her independent practice, she heads the counseling services team at Malia Dipi International School in Bangalore. Her associations involve having served as a team member on National Task Force for Learning Disabilities of Indian Association of Clinical Psychologists, consultant psychologist to Crystal House Bangalore, visiting consultant psychologist for developmental pediatrics units at Christian Medical College, Wello, and national advisory board member for the Teacher Foundation and Wipro Project on developing social and emotional uh, learning standards for schools. Currently, she is visiting faculty at National Institute of Design and the Bath. She also, Nina has an MPhil in clinical psychology from Nepal, Spanglo, and she has completed her doctoral research from the Center for Human Ecology, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, yeah, welcome to our podcast, The uh, Learning Matters. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monilla. And thank you to the Teacher Foundation for having me over. Um, I'm looking forward to the questions that you have for discussion for today. So thank you so much for having me here. I would like to begin this conversation by inviting you to share some of the key highlights of your experience with adolescents over the past couple of years, especially during the pandemic. But, um, you know, not just focused on pandemic. Right, right. So I think it's it's hard to kind of um, focus on the past few years as, as one unit. Mm. The pandemic has definitely exacerbated some of the things that we were picking up on earlier. Uh, so I think maybe a good place to start with is, is just recognizing that over the past few years, and I would safely say in the past decade, Uh, we have definitely seen an uptick in terms of mental health issues with the adolescent population. So if you're looking at, uh, you know, students and children in that age range of 12 to uh, 19, 20, there has definitely been an upsurge in terms of what we're seeing with anxiety, what we're seeing with depression. So mental health statistics in India with this population, even pre-pandemic, Uh, was at a point of uh, breaking Um, and and, and I do remember a a conversation that we were having with Dr. Shekhar Sheshadri where he referred to it as as a ticking time bomb in terms of what its implications were. So I think we were already in dire straits and Mm -hmm. what the pandemic then has done for this population has just increased some of that and uh, brought that spotlight so much closer home and mm. uh, it's just having us deal with very uncomfortable truths about this population in terms of how they are coping with things, right? 
um so in terms of my experience and and maybe just kind of uh working through with that adolescent age group um concerns are usually around um academics around relationships Mm, these two have been the big anchors in terms of what what students and and kids in this population would report issues around mm. um with with the pandemic though it's shifted mm. a little bit more there have been a lot that 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 spectrum of what we're dealing with has kind of widened for sure uh mm-hmm. it's become a lot more relational uh mm. there is a lot more family that's involved it's also uh you know hit closer home in terms of personal health and well-being and so those are the added issues that we're also seeing right now with adolescents um the the digital usage of course goes without saying and i'm and sure we'll you know come to that in due course but uh yes yeah, so so those are the issues that that kind of um i i would say typify a lot of the difficulties that we would see with with this group right but um for me personally working mm. with these uh, adolescents the last two years have almost been um dealing so much with with anxiety and with depression um with sleep difficulties and attention related issues uh mm. they have been very very common in terms of what students will come in with or you know adolescent clients will report with when they come in for sessions yeah mm. um i think that there, there there has just been a sense of uh feeling very limited by what that pandemic has thrown their way Uh, mm. and i'm seeing it from the perspective of a psychologist so if we're just looking mm. at this in terms of lifespan development mm. uh adolescence is is the time where the child is coming into their own uh mm. the the mm. main task of adolescence is autonomy uh mm-hmm. and and being your own person and that sense of agency and yes. what the pandemic did very very cruelly was remove mm. all of that from their personhood mm. uh, made them dependent in terms of what was going on in the family what was going on in terms of government health directives what was going mm. on in their communities so that sense of agency was i think really diminished in terms of um where they were it meant that so many of their normal milestones you know hanging out with friends being yes. able to um engage in romantic relationships yes yes uh, negotiating those social spaces all of those were were uh spaces that um were sadly fallen and mm. and down by the wayside um so it has also meant that in 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 session sometimes the starting point is really the acknowledgement of grief uh mm. with so mm. many of these adolescents um and and their families it's just the recognition of loss at so many levels mm. um, i like to use a term that um a, a psychologist referred to as disenfranchised grief which mm. is that um this is not grief in terms of loss of you know a, a person or mm. Mm. or something as severe as that but say something like i didn't get to attend my graduation party or mm. it was a milestone birthday or mm. you know it was mm. a milestone celebration uh, or this was the last time i was going to see my friends in this old school before i shifted to a new school yes uh, those have all been significant moments that in their own way have mm. loss but it's not something that society usually gives it that validation of it it's just something that you know okay it didn't happen you didn't attend that birthday or right graduation didn't happen it's okay and a, a lot of this pandemic for adolescents has just been the chalking up of oh. these minor uh events in their head that's now felt like a cumulative loss so if if i have oh. uh, you know an adolescent who comes up and says i don't know i'm just tuned out I don't feel like going on anymore it's just the same thing over and over again mm. uh, 
often times we are struggling with recognizing that they they are not even in a position where they are articulating the sense of grief that it is that they're experiencing they don't recognize it as as grief yes um so having to put that out there i feel has been um so much so much of what i've been doing in sessions mm. uh, with with this particular population um mm. having said that though i am also seeing the the the, the silver lining on the clouds mm. and i mm. see you know students and kids back and back into routines and settling mm. in mm. um so yes it's meant that they are normalizing in in some sense there mm. is a regaining of a sense of control uh, mm. and they are picking up on those spaces mm. there is definitely awkwardness mm. Um, mm. there is that sense of concern about how am i going to be meeting all these expectations but um there is a coming back and i think uh, mm. that's what we also need to 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 celebrate yeah Yes. Um Monella maybe another thing that I would just like to you know put in there is that um sometimes in our discussions even as adults or what goes on in media we mm. tend to um brush all of this in one stroke in terms yes. of uh, you know there is a mental health crisis and and we're in mm. this culture of crisis all the time you know there's mm. ecology there's political there's all sorts of crisis so uh it's i i think it's been um very convenient really to have to paint this in one brush stroke and and refer to this as the crisis of adolescence uh mm. and i think we have to be a lot more nuanced in mm. terms of how we understand uh this population and their mental health needs because the pandemic did not um affect everybody equally there were yeah. different subgroups that were affected at different levels to varying degrees and the groups that suffered the most were the ones that had pre-existing you know personal family or societal level issues and that mm-hmm. kind of got exaggerated in in the pandemic right mm-hmm. um so i i think that's important to recognize that there were certain groups that were a lot more vulnerable Mm-hmm. and of course the the financial inequities the the digital divides that this pandemic has created worsened some things mm-hmm. um there were also some groups who thrived uh yeah. there were adolescents yeah. who thrived in this and who were quite happy to, mm-hmm. to do the yeah. online schooling and that whole shift to a, a, a digital virtual world um and and these were students who had say high levels of social anxiety Mm. Uh, and were able to do really well mm. uh, when mm. when school closed down so i've had students who've said uh this is so much more simpler for me mm. i've had students who've switched conversations from in person to just the phone and mm. saying that not having to make eye contact has really helped because mm. uh it it fitted that adolescent and they were able to talk a lot more so we actually got a lot more therapeutic work yeah. done simply mm. because we weren't making eye contact and it was just phone right uh so those have been the interesting bits as well yes about the pandemic so on that note thank you so much nina for your time for sharing your insights from your rich experience and it was wonderful to chat with you this morning so thanks thanks so much for that Thank you Monilla that that has been an engaging morning so thank you so much for having me over and I'm just hoping for viewers or listeners out there that sense yes. of continuing to engage in conversations is is something that they are taking from these experiences that we've had <laughs>